be here. So we just want to meditate on that this morning and just give him praise. Hallelujah. Just give him another shout of hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. On the cross, crucified in great sorrow, he died. The giver of life was he.
his drums and by his drives we transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities hallelujah and by his stripes we are healed hallelujah he's near good God hallelujah just lift up some praises hallelujah he's alive he's alive he's alive hallelujah thank you Jesus praise God praise God Just 
Praise God, praise God, praise God. Just keep me near the cross. Hallelujah. Let's be my glory ever until my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Why you love me so, I shall never know. Oh, how you love me. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad that you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in.
us how to live and from the earth to the cross to pay my debt hallelujah and from the grave to the sky so we just gotta lift him up lift him up one more time hallelujah hallelujah praise god praise god my soul does magnify the lord
Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If it had not been a day for today, glory, glory, glory to God. He is risen. He's alive and he's well. Hallelujah. And because of today, you and I have life and not only life, but life abundantly. God bless you. At this time, oh, I'll call on. Um, Bishop Miller to do our opening prayer. God bless. Let us all stand for prayer. <clears throat> God bless the Lord. Let us look to the Lord. Our God and our Father, the great I am that I am. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We bow before you this morning. With a humble heart. Thank you for your presence with us. We thank you that you have sought us. And you have bought us. And you have brought us into your presence. To glorify you this morning. We recognize your presence with us. For we must have your presence with us. For we dare not walk alone. We must feel you. Hallelujah. And so we lift up your heart, lift up our hearts this morning in your presence. We are celebrating the resurrection. If you did not raise from the dead, then our preaching would be in vain. And we would be still in our sin. But thank you for our liberation. Thank you for liberating us from the bondage of sin. And so this morning, with great assurance, we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallelujah. Bless your dear children this morning. Whatever we do or whatever we say, let it be done to the honor and glory of your name. So that when we shall have come to the end of today's liberation, we can say truly, God has been with us. And it was good for us to be here. Bless your dear children. Lord, help us to lift you up with a pure heart. Help us to worship you this morning with clean hands. Help us to worship you this morning with all the assurance that if the skies should be burst at this time and you call us home, we all would be ready to meet you in glory. Have thine own way now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today is Evangelism Sunday. Hallelujah. And we must greet our president, Evangelist Carter, our vice, Evangelist Magilchrist. Glory to God and the workers with the team. God bless you. 
Hallelujah. At this time, our scripture reading will be read by Missionary Yo. Bless the Lord. Praise the, Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. Our morning scripture is taken from St. Matthew chapter 28. We'll be reading from verses 1 through 10. I will read and you please follow. Praise God. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, the women, fear not he, for I know that he seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and a great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Praise the Lord. We will go over verses 6 and 7. That's where our focus will be on today. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall he see him. Amen. And let's say amen to God's word. Praise the Lord. Return the service to our moderator. From the grave he arose With a mighty triumph for his foes He arose a victor from the dark domain And he lives forever with the saints to reign He arose, he
you, God. Thank you, praise team. He arose. A victor. Glory from the dark domain. Oh, he went in darkness, but he came out as the light of the world. Glory to God. The tomb is empty. He's living within you and I. Glory, glory, glory. He's a rose. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive and well. He arose. Glory to God. At this time, um, we'll have a welcome and announcement by Sister Joyce David. Let her feel welcome. God bless. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise God. He arose. Amen. We should be praising God and shouting and glorifying God just to know that he has indeed arose. Amen. Praise God. Happy Easter to everyone. And just before I come to you with the announcements, I am going to call Minister Reed. And after her, I am going to call Brother Adria Roper with a presentation. Minister Reed. Praise the Lord. Happy Easter, church. I'm here with just a brief announcement, but I do want you to take something out and write this down. It's in reference to the annual women's conference that will be held by New Birth Kingdom Deliverance Ministry. Um, this week that is coming, it begins on Thursday, April the 4th. And so please note these dates and times for those of you who will be in attendance. The first session will be on April the 4th, at 7 p.m., April the 4th, at 7 p.m. will be their opening service. On April the 5th, that's Friday, there will be a morning session starting at 6 a.m., a noon session, and a 7 p.m. session. Finally, on, not finally, I'm sorry, on Saturday the 6th, as we have been announcing, there will be a banquet in, men, in memory of Minister Patricia Lily Patton. That will be at 6.30 p.m. And there is a requested donation of $50 for that banquet. And tickets are still on sale. And I'm going to ask that those persons that are holding tickets, when I call your name, you stand and wave. Sister Terry and Bokel has tickets. Sister McCullough has tickets, and Sister Hamilton has tickets. So if you still haven't gotten your tickets for that event, please see them. And finally, this entire event will culminate on Sunday, April the 7th, which is next Sunday. And for the morning service, which begins at a regular time, the request or the Suggestion is that the ladies please wear white to next Sunday morning service because our Bahamian sisters and brothers will be dressed that way and they want us to be in one accord. This is not a demand, it's a suggestion. And then for the evening service that we wear, if we're able, black and red. Thank you so much for paying attention to those details. Good morning, church. Just want to say happy Easter, um, resurrection morning. Um, I just want to take this time out just to ask my wife to stand. <laughs> um, as, as we know, today is uh, Easter Sunday. Today is also her birthday, and I would just want to give her this small token Just some flowers. <laughs> uh, thank you. Happy birthday. Praise God. That was lovely. Praise God. Praise God, saints. Praise God, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And this is a thank you card. Uh, as you know, Sister East's mom had passed away and she 
went down to Jamaica to lay her to rest. And it says to Pastor Colson and the members of Unity New Testament Church, I would like to take this time to let you know my, to express rather my sincere gratitude for your prayers and for your support, also for your calls. We thank God for you and continue to be blessed of the Lord. Thank you for the comfort that you provided to my family. Amen. Thank you for your kindness and your thoughtfulness. I hope you know how much you are appreciated. Amen. And we continue to pray for Sister East. It's not easy when you've lost your mom. Amen. Praise God. So we continue to keep her in prayer. Praise God. Thank you so much for that. The Men's Fellowship would like to extend their gratitude to everyone that made the concert a success. Yesterday we had a beautiful time in the Lord. Amen. The musicians and Sister Billings and all the artists. Finally, a big thank you to everyone that came out and support this event. Amen. The rally list again is on the bulletin board. If you do not see your name, please let us know in the office. I'm going to call the names uh, on Sister Elliot's team. Sister Elliot, would you please stand so your praise God. You can come up to the front up here so they know who you are. When you hear your names, I'm going to ask you to stand. And again, Sister Elliot is your leader. Alan Balfour, Judy and Balfour, Deline Rose Biggs, Natalia Blake, Patrick Blake, Levy Brooks, Angela Clausen, Cornell Corate, Liebert Drummond, Jennifer Ellis, Idelia Forbes, Glenn Foster, Kadeen Francis, Everton Golden, Chevette Green Francis, Edna Hall, Hortense Henry, Fan Henry, Barbara Hightower Lewis, Rudolph Irving, Altamont Jack Jackson, Dolores Jones, Esme uh, Lawrence, Camille Masters, Sasha McDonald, Arlene Mackenzie Billings, Teresha, I believe it's pronounced, Miller, Nicole Noble, Macheria Pantry, uh, Mary Patrick, Ever Evelyn Powell, Michael Riley, James Robb, Beverly Scott, Dennis Seeley, Lalita Stewart, uh, Marva Stewart Smiley, Gwendolyn Thomas, Michelle Thomas, Alexander Vickers Sr., Odelia Walker, Alicia White McGregor, Jennifer White, Tanisha Williams Dunkley, and Lacosia Willis. And again, Sister Elliot is your leader. Amen? Praise God. Baptism and Lord's Supper, the washing of the saints' feet, will be on this evening, beginning promptly at 6 p.m. The Benevolence Department is holding a takeout dinner. It will be held on Saturday, April the 20th, uh, beginning at 1 p.m. The requested donation is $20. The menu will be consisting of escovitch fish, curry goat, jerk pork, jerk chicken, cow foot and beans, rice and peas, or festival, vegetables, potato pudding, and juice. Amen? Our annual ladies' retreat will be held on June 19th through the 22nd. It will be held at Reunion Resort in Orlando. The requested donation is $400. Deposits are due now. Please check the bulletin board for further information. A youth camp will be held at Fruitland Park from July the 9th through the 13th. The requested donation is $395 per person. Please see any one of the youth committee uh, members for more information. Deposits are still being collected. VBS begins July the 15th through the 19th. Application forms are available. Please see uh, the Sunday School Secretary, Sister Wyatt Scott, or Sister Vivalyn Silveri. I'm going to ask them to stand because uh, Minister Douglas is not really getting a response. 
and he needs your response immediately. So these are the Sunday school secretaries. Please see them. The registration time is running out. So if you do want to register your child for VBS, please do so today. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. If you are celebrating your birthday today through Saturday, we ask you to stand at this time. Happy birthday again to Sister Roper. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else's birthday today besides Sister Roper? Praise God. We're going to sing that happy birthday song. How about that? On the count of three. One, two, three. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Every day of your life. May you find Jesus there, a happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, the best you have ever had. Praise God, and we wish you a very happy and blessed birthday. If you are celebrating an anniversary today through Saturday, you may stand at this time. <laughs> praise God praise God and when is your anniversary praise God and how may I ask how many years awesome praise God to God be the glory may God continue to bless you to strengthen your marriage with his love his blessings from above and everything that you need for each other in that relationship may it come into being a very happy anniversary may God bless you praise God and at this time I would like to acknowledge our visitors if you're here with us for the first time please stand Give us your names and tell us by whom you were invited. And Shamika, glad to have you with us today. Praise God. God bless you. We're glad to have you with us. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm going to ask the ushers to help me here with the names of our visitors. If you would give them a mic so we can hear them. The church is crowded. We just need to get your names and by whom you were invited. All our visitors, please stand. All our visitors, please stand. If you're here for the first time. Good morning, everyone. My name is Denise Yadansa. I am here with my four, um, my two friends and my husband. Praise God. Glad to have you with us. And when you give you, me your name, saints of God, please remain standing. And we would like to properly acknowledge you. Amen. Go to the next person. Praise God. Glad to have you with us today. My name is Rohan. I'm here with my wife and um, praise God and I'm her friend from Australia. Praise God. Glad to have you with us. Hi, good morning. My name is Christine with my sister Nicole and our granddaughter. And we praise God. Keep every, going. Praise every God. I was invited by my brother Michael. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Grace and peace, everyone. Grace and peace, my beloved. My name is Nicole Jarrett. I was invited by my brother, Michael Jarrett. Praise God. Glad to have you with us. Good morning. I was invited by my mom and my fiance. Praise God. Glad to have you with us. Praise God. Glad to have you with us this morning. Praise God. Today's coming is Mars. I'm here with my husband and with Mark, who so brought me to this. Praise God. Glad to have you with us this morning. Please stay standing. Remain standing. Good morning. Um, my name is Krista. I was invited by my mom and we're in getting. Praise God. Glad to have you with us this morning. Good morning. Praise God. We are Sister and Brother Tomlin from the Maypen New Testament Church, and uh, we are here because of the Douglases. Praise God. Glad to have you with us this morning. Good 
Praise God. Give our, give our visitors a round of applause, saints of God. Praise God. We thank and praise God for all our visitors. And One more. Go ahead, please. Praise God, glad to have you with us. And I'm going to ask again our visitors, please remain standing. All our visitors, please remain standing. Praise God, we want to properly acknowledge you. And the reason for that is because we do not take it lightly when visitors enter our congregation. We thank and praise God for the ones who invited you, but most importantly, I believe it is the Holy Spirit that ushered you in this building on today. You're here for a special purpose, you're here for a special reason. And we pray that the when the message goes forth today, I believe that there is a message there for everyone. And God will let you know what that message is for you to reflect upon it throughout the rest of the week. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Michael Colson, and the members of Unity, we welcome you to this morning. May God be bless you. Praise God. You may be seated. And our thought for today, sometimes when it appears that things are falling apart, they're actually falling into place. Praise God. I turn the service back to our moderator. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister David. We all bear those announcements in mind. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this time, we'll be taking up our tithes and offering, and I'll be asking Deacon Bokal. Is Deacon Bokal? I'll be asking Deacon Bokal to bless the tithes and the offering for us. Ushers, please get yourself. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. And bow our heads. Our Father who art in heaven, we give you thanks this morning, O oh God, for another opportunity to be in your house. O oh God, as I lift the tithe and the offering before you this morning, I pray, O oh God, that you would bless it and sanctify it. Continue, O oh God, to pour the blessing upon your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The song will be done by Sister Winter. Hallelujah. Sister Wins, <laughs> praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Praise Let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the conquering lion of the tribe of Judea. Hallelujah. Lily of the valley, let your sweet aroma. Fill my life. Rose of Sharon showed me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Oh, my Lord, fairest of ten thousand, make me a reflection of your love.
Sunday we take up a second offering. This does not happen every week, but only on Evangelism Sunday, and we have it just every fourth Sunday. Hallelujah. This time I'll call Minister Bukal with the hymn. 
Put your hands together for our minister. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. He's alive and well. Let's continue to praise the Lord. What a beautiful day it is to give to mission. Praise God. Let's just think on what Jesus did for us. He did it for the world. Hallelujah. He suffered. He bled and died. And today is Resurrection Sunday. He rose triumphantly. Hallelujah. Now he's sitting around the throne making intercession for each and every one of us. Praise God. And today we're not able to go but we can send. And today I would ask you, please, give bountifully towards mission. Not my word. The Bible said if you give bountifully, you shall receive a bountiful blessing. But if you give sparingly, you shall also receive sparing blessing. So today we can't pay Jesus for what he had done for us. But hallelujah. Today I know you can give and help somebody along the way. Amen? Amen. We will turn to our favorite song. The theme song, 212. Praise God. But I'm going to ask you, please stand. Let us pray at this time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Most holy, eternal Father, we come to you in the most precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for this special day. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for your people who are gathered here today. And I pray as we are about, Lord, to collect an offering towards mission that you will bless it. I pray that you will speak to the hearts of your people, that they will give bountifully to your work. These are the mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the fire in line. If you wear a brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the fire in line. There are many dangers that we all must face. If we die of fighting, it is no disgrace. Coward in the service, they will find no place. So keep on the fire in line.
back to the moderator. Minister Bokal, thank you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You have life this morning, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We could not do it for ourselves. Had not um, he went to the, the cross. You and I would have no hope, but because of the cross and because of a day like today, we have hope. We have hope in Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is hope in Jesus. There is hope in Jesus. Hallelujah. He's alive as well. Hallelujah. At this time, put your hands together for our lovely choir this morning. Praise the Lord. We'll be led by Brother Jason. Praise the Lord. Continue to praise the Lord, church. Continue to praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. He wake you up this morning. He didn't have to do it. He watched over you last night. So many dangerous toil and sneer. We all have already come. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What more do you want him to do? Hallelujah. To prove that he loves you. My God said he's one and only son. To die upon the cross. Oh God, on the third day he's resurrected. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, Brother Matthew.
Well, thank you, Brother Jen. Continue to praise the Lord as I present to you. Dr. Bishop Michael Cosmo, as our day speaker. God bless you. Pray for him. Praise God. Let's just leave our hands, everybody, everywhere. Just wave your hands in the atmosphere. And now we're going to shout, thank you, Jesus. Let us shout, he's risen. Jesus is alive. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Pleasant good afternoon to you all and indeed it's such a blessing and a privilege to join with millions of Christians throughout the world celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. There are other so-called gods that are dead and they remain dead. But Jesus is alive and he sits at the Father's right hand. And today we celebrate with a hope that gives us joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. I must say thanks to Sister Amahagwa who has moderated our service thus far and we continue to pray her strength and the strength of her family. Also, we give God thanks for our team that continues to work every week, our praise team, our choir, our musicians, technicians, camera personnel, video personnel, and every other in their rightful places. We thank God for the weekend that was indeed a blessing. We started Friday morning in our Good Friday service, and Minister Carter ministered the word, and it was a blessing indeed. And we came back on Friday evening where we had our annual um, Easter play. And indeed, they did come through, praise God, even stronger than before. It would appear as if they have perfected their trade. And to this, I say thanks to Dr. Reed, Sister John, Sister uh, Mitchell, and others who continue to give their service to the Lord in this wise. Praise God. And it did not stop there last night. It was like a marathon. Last night we were back here for our annual concert. And I tell you, it was a tremendous blessing. Praise God. The only thing I question I asked myself this morning is when will be the next concert? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thanks to Minister Burrell. Um, Sister Billings and the musicians and others who were um, influential in allowing the service to be what it was last night. And to God be the glory. Great things he has done. And thanks to the members and friends who have contributed by just turning up and donating accordingly. Praise God. We are reminded that this Thursday, this coming Thursday, the Bahamian Conference will be held right here from Thursday through Sunday. And so there are activities that are on the bulletin board. And these days we hardly use pen. You just take out your smartphone, take a picture of the activities for Thursday evening, Friday throughout the day, and Saturday, and also Sunday. And we will support them accordingly. This is one of the churches in the Bahamas that support us so nicely. We have maybe over... 10 churches in the Bahamas that we work with and we maintain a very strong relationship with them. This is not just for the sisters, it's for the brothers also. So the brothers are invited to be out. We want this place to be packed out on Thursday evening, packed out on Friday evening and also Friday during the course of the day. Those who are not working and can attend, we ask that you do accordingly. All right, and previously, um, we, for approximately five, six months, we'll be doing Tell Me Pastor. So on this Wednesday, our topic will be preparing for retirement. Retire to refire. So if you are planning on retiring, we ask that you come out this Wednesday. And 
every one of us, if the Lord tarries, will have to retire one day. And if you are retiring and having problem coping with retirement, we invite you out on this coming Wednesday. We welcome back to church our brethren that were out, Sister East, as we continue to pray her strength and the strength of her family as she has lost her mom and also Sister Bogle, her daughter. God bless you and welcome back to church. As I announced last week, Sister Elliston, welcome back Sister Elliston. She was not here last week as she celebrates her 90th with a cruise. Praise God. She knows how to enjoy herself. Just stand and wave your hands, Sister Elliston. She knows how to enjoy 90 years and celebrating with a cruise. God bless you richly. Praise God. We welcome back Deacon and Sister Vickers and family. God bless you and also Sister Veronica Robinson. And also um, we welcome Sister Roses on to church today. Um, uh, we pray your strength and nice having you in church with us, brother and sister. We special welcome to brother and sister Adrian and Centuria Roper. Stand together, the young couple. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Special welcome to you. And this is the youngest couple in unity. And we love to see when our young people um, come together, praise God, and unite in matrimony. Praise God and continue to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. God bless you and our prayers continue to be with you. And those that are waiting, just be patient. And David said, wait, I say, on the Lord. And he will renew your strength on the right time one of these days it will be your time you will be walking down the aisle you will be sitting at the halter waiting for the bride to come all right so let's hold on a little while longer everything everything is gonna be all right praise god i was about to say everything <laughs> like the Jamaicans that everything is going to be alright but everything is going to be alright praise God, praise God and Sister Rodri, we in, um, welcome her back to church Minister and Sister Mullins and family welcome back praise God, Mr. and Mrs. Tomlin from the Maypen New Testament Church of God Associate of Dick Minister and Sister Douglas special welcome to you today Praise God. And Sister Lawson, praise God. Where she's at? God bless you. Nice having you. And we enjoyed your singing last night. Our prayers continue to be with you. And again, we want to say thanks to this artist of unity. You did exceptionally well last night. And we thank God for you. Praise God. This is a one-stop, one-stop, praise God, place. Uh, I'm not, there are certain companies when you go inside there you have everything when you come to unity it's a one stop you carry a bag you're going on with everything you want praise God but God has blessed us tremendously with exceptional abilities praise God we continue to pray for those that are not doing well we pray for Mr. Roper that is here with us today we pray a special prayer for him that God will grant him the desires of his heart and touch him physically and in other areas of his life also brother Williams who is not doing well and also sister Dennis's son who is at the hospital and craves our prayer and brother curate who is a Corpor um, recuperating at home. We pray their strength as we stand together and look to the Lord in prayer. And if you are here today and you're not feeling well in your bodies, we pray you trust the Lord just now for with God all things are possible. He has proven himself over and over again. Praise God. We um, I ask Bishop Miller to come just now and pray for the sick. Praise God. Let us all look to the Lord. Let us focus on him who heals. When peace like a river tended my ways, sorrows like Sheba's road, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to know it is well. Lord, we thank you this morning. 
You know the pain and the sorrows. If somebody is saying this moment, does Jesus care? The belief is saying, does anybody care? But you are saying this morning, I care. I care for your health. I care for your sickness. I care. That's why I was resurrected. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. So we want to thank you this morning, Lord, for healing. Here your children stand before this morning with different needs. Different needs. Looking into your hands like the servant looking in the master's hand. Like the children looking in their parents' hand. And so this morning with hope, with faith, with desire, we claim that victory this morning. We pray that you will heal your people. Touch your children this morning. Those that are sick in body from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Hallelujah. So when this service shall have come to its end, they shall leave here not defeated, but leave here in victory. Victory in the mind. Victory in the spirit. Victory in the body. Thank you, Lord, for healing your people this morning. And even those that are not in this congregation, but they are listening and watching this service today. Let your Holy Spirit penetrate that room. Oh God, that living all. Wherever your children are this morning, we pray for their healing. And so my brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and be healed. Hey, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you thanks for this healing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It might be since you came in in the busyness of the morning, you just sat down. So now you're going to be very um, courteous by turning towards your neighbor and bring your neighbor's greeting, both sides. And even if you want to turn around or before, but just greet somebody. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And we're happy to have not only the visitors whose names were called, but every visitor that is here today, we are happy to have you in our midst. And we are happy to have our members. Because if you don't come to church, praise God, we just can't keep church. But so every person that walks through these doors, you are very important to God and to us. I've asked Pastor Scott to bring the day's message. So let us stand as we prepare our hearts for the word of God. Gone, the stone is rolled back. Gone, the tomb is empty. Gone. To see that this father's hand. Hallelujah. Oh, he is gone over death, triumphant, gone. Sin is defeated, gone, and he lives forevermore. He is gone. The stone is rolled back, gone. The tomb is empty, gone. To see that his father's son, oh, gone. Over death, triumphant, gone. Sin is defeated, gone. and praise the Lord. Just before I turn the service over to Pastor Scott, just an extension of the welcome. We want to welcome um, Sister Mitchell's son and his family. Um, Ron's and his family. Just lift, wave your hands. Ron's and his, and his family. God bless you. Nice having you in church today. We pray your strength. And praise God and Sister Carrie's her name just slipped me along the way. 
Praise God. Nice having you in church today. God bless you. It's been a while, but it's nice having you in church today. God bless you. Open your hearts to the Lord as he unveils himself, as he opened the splendor of heaven and pour out grace for every need as we receive the man of God, as you preach along with him in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Let me greet our pastor and bishop, Bishop M.A. Colson, Bishop Miller and Sister Miller, Evangelist Brown, all the ministers and their wives, and the deacons and their wives, right? All brothers and sisters in Christ, our young people, our children, our visitors, those on YouTube and social media. Last but not least, my wife, Sister Scott. Uh, I, was, I, was, I got a school in the last time. Not by her. Right, she, she didn't do that. Thank you. It's, it's joy and a pleasure to be here this morning or afternoon. It is Resurrection Sunday. And I sense a kind of enthusiasm in my spirit. Hallelujah. Oh God, God is truly alive. He's alive. Praise God, he's alive, he's alive. This morning I want to draw your attention to the book of Matthew 28, the scripture that was read early on. And I want us to focus on the theme, the tomb is empty. He is risen. He is alive. The tomb is empty. He is risen. He is alive. He is alive. He woke us up this morning. He sets us on our way. He gave us a sound mind. We can think. We can hear. We can see, we can walk, and if you can't walk on two feet, you have four wheels, you can get in, and you're able to walk or move around. God is a good God. I cannot overemphasize the point that God is good, and it demonstrates the goodness of God that he woke us up this morning. And that is good. Not only it is mercy, it's the mercies of God that we are alive this morning. Before I get into the word, I just want to do something or say something here. Every unbeliever sitting in this congregation this morning or afternoon, I want you to examine the word of God today. Examine what you will hear. And not only examine, but make a decision today to follow the resurrected Christ. I'm going to ask you to make that decision to say yes to Jesus. It's very important. More important than the breath that you breathe. That goes to your nostrils and going to your lungs. More than the food that you eat. The word of God says, I will esteem the word of God more than the necessary food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds that comes from the mouth of God. Because God spoke the words and it came. So we need to take the word of God seriously. So I encourage you, you are not saved. And those in YouTube, you too will have an opportunity 
to know the resurrected Christ. The empty tomb, he is risen, he is alive. Father, I ask you to just bless the word to our hearts. May we be responsive to your word in obedience. Speak, Lord. I'm just that humble servant, not eloquent enough, but the Holy Spirit is able to make me possible to do what you ask me to do. Bless the word we pray and touch the ears of those who are listening that they will make that decision to follow Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a song that I was preparing came in my spirit and I heard the song sing twice since morning. So we're not going to sing it. It's just a confirmation of the word. It was sing, sung twice. But I just want to quote the words for us to understand the message of the song. And I think the men are going to bring it on the screen. Low in the grave he lay. Jesus my Lord, my Savior. Waiting the coming day. Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over foes, his foes. He arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives, hallelujah. And he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah! Christ arose. The second standard says, Vainly they watch his bed. Jesus my Savior. Vainly they seal the dead. Jesus my Lord. The third and final standard says, Death cannot keep his prayer. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Hallelujah. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose the victor from the dark domain. Hey, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. Stand on your feet and shout, he arose, he arose, hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ arose, hey, hallelujah, 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 hey, Christ arose. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hey. The empty tomb. He's risen. He's alive. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Resurrection Sunday. He's alive. He's alive. Hey, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. The resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Historically, event whereby Jesus came back from physical death to newness of life with a glorified body never to die again. The bodily resurrection of Jesus is one of the central tenets of the Christian faith. His bodily resurrection validates the claim that he is both Lord and Christ. It substitutes and the proportion, proportions that his life and death are not just the life and death of a good man, 
but indeed was God incarnate. And that by this death, we have forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. The four Gospels are selective in the events they report surrounding the resurrection. Each emphasizes the empty tomb, but each in somewhat different in the post-resurrection appearance recounted. Matthew said in verse 6 of chapter 28, He is not here, for he is risen. Mark said in verse 16, verse 6, He is risen, he is not here. Note how they put it together. Luke 24 verse 6 says, the three chapters are the three same verses in verse 6 of each chapter. It says, he is not here, but is risen. The emphasis the three gospels are showing us here is that the both or three um, gospels agreed that he is not here. Meaning he is not in the tomb. The tomb is empty, gone. The stone is rolled back, gone. The tomb is empty. Sin is defeated, gone. Lord Jesus, if you are here this morning and in your tomb you have the stone of sin lying there, Jesus is able to roll the stone of sin out of your life and make you a new creature this morning. For the word of God says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. I'm saying, my friends, whatever situation in you're in, you're in your tomb of sin, you're in the tomb of disaster. But I'm saying to you today that Jesus, the resurrected Christ, the one who died and was crucified, he was rejected of men, but he was buried. But on the third day, he rose again according to the scriptures and my friends I wanted to tell you my friends a lot can happen in three days a lot can happen in three days over the span of just three days Jesus was betrayed arrested put on trial convicted burnt, beaten crucified, laid in a tomb, and raised from the dead. Hallelujah. His death paid the penalty for our sin. And his glorious resurrection displayed his victory and power. Because of what Jesus accomplished in three days, your life and eternal destiny can now be completely changed in an instant. So you are sitting, you are here and you are not saved. Your life can be changed in an instant if you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he was risen according to the scriptures. My friends, he's alive and he can make you alive though you are dead in your trespasses and sins Jesus is the life giver hallelujah he's the life giver he giveth his life so that you might live the tomb is empty there's no evidence to prove that Jesus is in the tomb, but there are evidence to prove that it's empty. Yeah. He's the only one who went in the tomb and came back alive forevermore. <laughs> Lazarus died twice but Jesus died once to give us life whatever dead situation you're in this morning 
every unsaved, I'm, I'm stressing the point today. You are unsaved. This is a good day, resurrected Sunday, where you can be born again, where you can be delivered from the tomb of sin and from the stones of sin in your lives, whether you love drunkardness or whatever you are just running around and doing as you like, as you want. I'm saying to you this afternoon, you have an opportunity to say yes to the resurrected Christ. The tomb is empty. He is risen. He is alive. He's alive. When you turn to God in repentance, recognize Jesus as Lord and put your trust in him, your sins are forgiven. You receive eternal life and you become a child of God now and for eternity. You see, Jesus took your death. He took all the shame, the scoffing and the rudeness and spit upon him. He did it all for you. He did it all for me. There was nothing he did. Everything that Jesus did on earth was good. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He caused the blind to see. He did all these great miracles before the very eyes of the people. But they rejected him. But he died. For you and for me. The oldest account of the resurrection is found in 1 Corinthians 15. In that passage, Paul recounted a number of post-resurrection appearances. He established that the believer's future res resurrection is based on the historicity of Christ's bodily resurrection. And so Paul put it in, in prospect. He says... One, the fact of Christ's resurrection. Two, the importance of Christ's resurrection. Three, order of rese re resurrections. Four, moral implications of Christ's resurrections. Five, bodies of the resurrected. And six, bodies of the translated living. Read that passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians 15. Paul gives you a whole life example of what the resurrection is all about. You read it for yourself. You see there that Paul believed in the resurrection. Paul believed it. So we need to recognize how important the resurrection is. To have a solid foundation in the Christian life. I'm going to name it to you. The birth of Jesus Christ. His work and ministry. His burial or his crucifixion, his burial and his resurrection. That's a solid foundation of our Christian faith. You have to believe all these tenets of, the, of it. It's very important. The his, bur his birth. His ministry, his burial, his, his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. And then his ascension. His work is complete. And so, if you don't believe that Jesus did not raise from the dead, you are serving a dead God today. You are serving a dead God. But we know that our Savior... Our oh, Jesus burst the tomb. He came out to give us life. The empty tomb. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his foe. He arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, he arose. So when we look at the scriptures in, Ma in Matthew 28, we see here where the, the woman or the first set of persons who went to the sepulcher. 
They were the first one who got the, took the news to the disciples. And so the Gospels and Matthew, Mark and Luke, they specifically state Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of, of Jesus or James and the other women. They, they specifically say those to those about the women. But I want to, to, to us to see here that the women were more brave than the men. They were more brave. Because they were hiding. The men who were supposed to be the strong men were hiding. But the woman says, I must see where they have laid my Lord. I must go. And they took ointment and to anoint the body of Jesus. And, and Mary Magdalene specifically Mark says when she went she did not see but two men in white apparel came and said to her who are you looking for he is not here he is risen but these two men in particular when I was looking at it I saw something here when Jesus was being crucified and he said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? God turned his back on his son. And you notice there was no angels there. Notice there were no angels there to give him support. He must accomplish the work that he came for. But when I look back in Matthew chapter 1, it's the angels who announce his coming. And the angels told Joseph, Joseph, don't put away Mary because the child that she brings forth is from the Holy Ghost. And then we see here in his resurrection, it was the two angels who came and said to, to Mary Magdalene, he's not here, he is risen. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. The one of men may say that Jesus Christ is Lord indeed. And we must glorify him. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hey, Jesus is alive and well. He's alive. And so the woman came to the sepulcher. They were the first to take the message of his resurrection. He arose up on the first day of the week. On the first day of the first week, God commanded light to shine out of darkness. On this day, therefore, did he who was the light of the world shine out of the darkness of the grave. Jesus shines out. The first day of the first week, God says, let there be light. And there was light. And on the first day of the week, he arose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shines out of the darkness of the grave. Hallelujah. He arose this morning. He arose. He's alive and well. Let us continue to glorify him. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Mary Magdalene and the other women were there. And they got the story and they went and they began to tell it. In verse 3 says his countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake and become as dead men. When they saw what happened, the guards, they became like dead men. They, they fall, lose consciousness. They lose consciousness. And the point is, my friends, that when we recognize all of this and see what Jesus did for you and me, how can we stay in sin and not doing the best that we should by offering ourselves as a living sacrifice to God? All of us who are sitting in this sanctuary this afternoon and those who are watching by all media, whatever social media, how can you say that there's no God? How can you say that you're an atheist? And the fact is that, my friends, it is God who gives you life and you are denying that there's no God. You're a fool. 
For the fool has says in his heart, there is no God. I say to you, and I challenge you this morning, if you can stand on your feet and tell me there is no God, you are lying. God is. And before the foundation of the earth, he is. And even during creation, he is. God was not created, he is. Because he is God and ever will be God. And we cannot change the fact whether you say you're an atheist or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a whatever you may call yourself or whatever religion you may consign yourself to. The fact is that, my friends, there is one God. The God of heaven and earth. The God of all creation. The God of all redemption. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob the God of Moses the God of Joshua the God of Jeremiah the God of Isaiah the God of Lamentation the God of the Apostles oh he's the God hallelujah he alone is God and he will not share his glory with any man He's the God of all creation. And he is worthy to be praised. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here, for he's risen. As he said, Come and see the place. Where they lay him. He's not here. He's risen. Come and see the place where they lay him. The tomb is empty. Sin is defeated. Gone. It is gone. He's alive. He's alive and well. Jesus says, I must go. But I will send you the comforter. And he will teach you. He will tell you everything that he knows. He will be your counselor. And my mind go back to Isaiah 53. Who hath believed the report for the arm of the Lord? For Jesus he said that Jesus, that he'll be crucified. Isaiah prophesied this even before, over 500 years before, that Jesus would have died. That he would be born of a virgin woman, Mary. That he would be crucified. And that he would rise again. My friends, the prophecies of the Old Testament is in collaboration with the New Testament. My friends, you cannot divide or divide the old from the new because Jesus in the New Testament often quote the Old Testament. And it's a fulfillment of what Jesus would have done for us. So don't follow those preachers who tell you we threw away the Old Testament and we are with the New. No. For you to understand the New, you have to go to the Old Testament and to understand some things there. Because the prophecies of the Messiah, you read Isaiah and it gives you the entire message concerning the Messiah. From his birth to his death and his resurrection. And his ascension. Believers, we need to take some time in the scriptures. I really get excited more times when it comes about the scriptures. Because it's very important. It's food for the soul. Just as our physical food is for the body that gives you the nurturance. 
and the fruits and the vegetables and the various things that you eat that will give the body energy that the body can move and, and exercise and, and do all that is needed. So the soul needs the word. Our souls need the word of God. So he says, he is not here for his reason. As he said, come and see the place where they laid him. So the angels were showing Mary Magdalene and the other woman. He says, come, look. Look for yourself. This is the evidence. What do you see? It's an empty tomb. Just the dead clothes. Fold, put aside. The angels brought the news of Jesus' birth. And they also brought the news of his resurrection. I say to all unbelievers here this afternoon. Jesus died. That you might live. And I want to explain a little to you this afternoon concerning Jesus to an uns every unsaved person here this afternoon. Jesus' birth came for you. Secondly, the ministry of Jesus Christ, if you look at the four Gospels, it's about him doing his Father's will. Obeying his father, doing his father's will. And in that part of the four gospels and the ministry of Jesus, where he was about to die and he told his disciples, they could not believe him. They didn't accept the fact that he says he's going to leave them. But in order for us to be redeemed, he had to die. And so his, 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 his crucifixion, First of all, his trial. He was tried. Caiaphas and Pilate and all these great men who thought that they had the power to release him. They couldn't. He gave his life for us. The scripture says he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. But he says, no, I must die for Adam's fallen race. I came for the purpose, Jesus says, that I might die, that you might live. Come see the place. He is risen. The tomb is empty. He is alive. He is risen. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall he see him. Lo, I have told you. All along. During the three years Jesus was teaching his disciples. And the third, approximately 33 years he spent on earth. And the time he spent with them. They still didn't see it. He says. Go and tell the disciples. So the women who were brave. Took the message to Peter. And the others. Women, you are important in the ministry of God. You are important. Don't let those preachers who tell us that you can't preach and you can't this and you can't that. But spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the men are very timid. You, you know, one of the things that the enemy does to crush the men, fear. Men, God gives us the responsibility of leadership both in our homes and in the church. And so often, when I look in the churches today, back home in Jamaica, 
and even here, 90, I would probably put 99% of the membership of the church are women. And if we give 1% of men, we are the men. Satan have them as a, on a, on a string just twisting them. Like a yo-yo. Men, you are strong. And so Satan knows the strength of men. So he will do everything to get the men in his rope to wrap them around them. And so Satan will, the, the scripture says, the lust of the eyes. So he will lead the men to the clubhouse. He will lead the men to the drinking house. He will lead the men to the houses where they shouldn't be. We are the men. Presently, right if you check, majority of all in this sanctuary are women. Prison, the gambling den. At the sports bar, at the sports game, football, soccer. Right now you'll find fathers who should be at home with their wives and children or at the soccer game or at some clubhouse or they're doing this and doing that and neglecting their responsibilities of men and priests in the house of God and in their homes to stand up with their family come to church with their wife and children and lead them and show them the way to walk with God men where are you men where you are let me talk to these men today Men, you think you're a man because you're a mocha and you beat your wife? And you slap her in, your, in her face? And you talk down to her? That's not a man. A man is a follower of Jesus Christ. And he has the attributes of God. And he will show respect to his wife. And he will demonstrate it by his lifestyle. And how he speaks to her. And don't talk down to her. And say, me are the man, so you submit to me. It doesn't work that way. You as the man must be respectful to your wife. And show her the way God wants you to show her how to live. Men, I don't know why, I, this is not part of my notes. Men, men, you need to be resurrected. Oh God. Your wife doesn't even know how much you earn. Your wife doesn't know how much your paycheck is. But yet you come home expecting to have food to eat. Oh God. Men, I call upon you today. Men, I say... To you today, today is Resurrection Sunday. You can be changed. You can be resurrected from dead works to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. I say to all the unsaved men sitting in this congregation, you need Jesus to treat your wife with respect and show her love and the children in the home. Not because you are the man, you must exercise flexible. Yes. 
No, that's not it. The character. What kind of husband you are to your wife and children. Husbands, I beg of you, love your wives and respect them. Do not talk down to them. Do not even touch them. What I mean by don't, don't even put your hand on them to hurt them. One other thing, let me tell you. Men, I'm talking to you. If you were slap your wife anytime at all, go and bow down and tell her you're sorry. Because no man has any right to slap any woman. No right. And even if it is your child, you have to know how to slap your child. All unsaved men in here today, I beg you, seek Jesus. And when Jesus comes into life, it will be a change. It will change your attitude, change your behavior, change your lifestyle, change how you talk, your speech, your attitude. Everything about you will be changed. If any man be in Christ is a new creature. A change takes place from the inside and also takes place on the outside because God beautified the meek with salvation. Men, I'm not taking any set on you, but I just want to us to understand as men, we, God, have called us to be leaders and priests in our homes. And we must live by example, set the example in our homes for us, our sons and daughters. Because you know what, men, when your son come up and see how you treat your mother, see him go and treat his wife. Same way. You talk down to, to your wife, the children see how daddy speaks to his mother, their mother. And the children come up growing up in that kind of attitude. And the boys treat girls just the same way because daddy lived that kind of lifestyle. Men, I speak to you. You are not saved. This is an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. And you are saved and there are some situations that you face. God is able to see you through. Come and lay them at the foot of the cross. Because Jesus will take you through. So before I close... I just want to read verse 9 and 10. The appearance of Jesus to the woman. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren, that they go into Galilee and they shall they see me. Today you're an unsaved. Come see a man. Come see this man, Jesus. He can change everything in your life. The tomb is empty. He's risen. He's alive. So I'm going to ask all unsaved persons here in the sanctuary, you know you're not saved. I'm not embarrassing you or anything, but it's a decision you have to make today. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow is not given to any one of us. Today is. I ask of you as pastor come as I close and hand the mic over to him. You are not saved. Whether you're a man or a woman, a child or a boy. 
is an opportunity. Today is resurrected Sunday. Jesus rose. The tomb is empty. He's risen. He's alive. God bless you, Pastor. I hear the voice of Jesus saying, Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy way. Rewind, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was weary and worn and sad I found in him a resting place and he hath made me glad as we bring our service to a close after listening to the word of God, the reason why we are here today is to glorify God and to give you the opportunity that you can accept Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. So with this beautiful crowd we have here today, if there is one person here you are not saved, God would have had you to be here today. We're going to ask you to walk to the altar and stand with us as we pray with you think about turning your life over into the hands of god the only reason you are alive is god giving you time to accept it, him before it is too late there is no repentance in the grave the bible said it's appointed unto man once to die and after death comes the judgment persons who are in hell today wish they have the opportunity you have do not waste this opportunity away do not say some more convenient day today the bible says if you hear his voice harden not your heart the altar is open come join us at the altar come surrendering your life into the hands of jesus his lamp is still lit and his hands are outstretched waiting for the vilest sinners to return. I hear the voice of Jesus saying, I am this dark world light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise and all thy days be bright i came to jesus as i was weary and worn and sad I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad we're gonna sing that verse one more time I hear the voice of Jesus saying, Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary want, lay down thy way, rewind, lay down thy head upon my brain hallelujah you know just seeing these two souls walk to the altar 
allow joy to flow through my body praise God even if one person gets saved today but you have two coming to the altar for salvation praise God it's a plus and we thank God for this young man and this young lady with their children who have walked to the altar today can be the day praise God where the great transactional work is wrought in their life we're going to be praying with them that God will touch them today and this will be a new start today praise God of a new start in their life father in the name of Jesus I lay my hand upon this your daughter we thank you for her we thank you for allowing the spirit of grace to draw her to the altar and as she stands at the altar of prayer i pray god that will touch her i pray that will minister to her i pray that will touch her heart and as she confesses her sin to you i pray you'll forgive her of all her sins and cleanse her from all unrighteousness i pray that you will endow within her the spirit of sonship that she will cry have a father i pray that you will save her and when time changes into eternity we pray that she will join the saints when the saints go marching in father i pray for your son in the mighty name of jesus as i lay my hand upon him you said young man i call upon you because you are strong as he walks to the altar as he surrenders his life father i pray for a touch i pray that salvation will come unto him i pray that your precious blood will touch him i pray that you wash him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet oh God receive him in your royal kingdom I pray that his life will be transformed that he will not be the same person but God it will be a new creature hallelujah hallelujah oh thank blessed be your name blessed be the name of Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Father, I pray for others who are the helter. I pray that you'll minister to them. I pray, God, that you'll meet them at the point of need. Lord Jesus, we pray for that touch. Your touch makes the, the difference. Your voice makes the difference. When you speak, oh God, you calm our troubled soul. Hallelujah. It's your voice at all time that makes the difference i pray that will continue to minister to this audience we thank you for your servant whom you have used in the ministry of the word we pray you'll continue to bless him continue to strengthen him and we pray that the anointing will continue to be upon him we pray that every person that came today will leave with a special blessing we pray for unction we pray for deliverance we pray for victory and we pray for unsaved who did not come to the altar and are altering on two opinions i pray god that they will be fully persuaded father we commit ourselves in your hands while we ask these mercies we say thanks in jesus name lift your hands and praise the lord praise god praise god evangelist carter will take the names of those who are the altar for salvation as we continue to pray their strength and thanks to the members and the friends for coming to this beautiful day of worship the lord bless thee and keep thee the lord calls his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the lord lift up his holy countenance upon thee and give thee peace within thy walls and prosperity within thy gates at this time henceforth and forevermore god bless you and thanks to Pastor Scott for availing himself in the ministry of the word. Shake somebody's hands before you go. Hallelujah. How oh, from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foe. He arose the victor from the dark domain. Baptism this evening at 6 p.m. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Vainly, they see.
the tomb Jesus my Savior vainly they seal the damn Jesus my Lord up from the grave ye arose with a mighty triumph for his foe he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with the saints to reign he arose Jesus, my Savior, He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave He arose with a mind. And he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they seal the dead, hallelujah. Jesus, my Savior, vainly they seal the tomb. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foe. Oh, he arose the victor from the dark domain, and he lived forever with the saints to reign. He arose Keep his prey, Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave, he arose. Lives forever with his saints. 